what matters to them. Come on, tell them again. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's very easy. So you won't struggle speaking to him and worshiping him. Say it again.
room that saturates us in the midst of our pain, in the, in the midst of our heartbreaks. God, we honor you today. So we worship you today. In spirit and in truth, come on, can we give God a great big shout in the room?
want to worship you opposed to how they feel and what is going on in their life. That God, you're going to rain down blessings on them so that those that spectate and think that what we're doing is nothing. God, you're going to make a difference between the worshipers and those that are just those that just want to be here. But I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, release a refreshing on the worshipers today. Release an anointing on them, God, to be able to stand in the face of trial and tribulation. That God, and they have an overflow in their life. Everybody shout overflow. I declare overflow in this room. People that have a heart after you have been clamoring. I've won the sun overflow. I've got the sun of my hands and the soul of my feet overflow. Listen, as we get into part three of Saving Pay today, I need you guys to understand that God is going He is doing something outside of, I, I know we're in our sermon series and all of that stuff, but there's this dual thing that the Lord is doing. He is thickening his presence on us so that we can do what it is he's called us to do. He's thickening his glory on us. And so that, that's why you hear that transition in our worship, that it's, it's different, it's deeper, it's it's one of those things where you just have to take your time with you. You can't rush through it because God is trying to say that he's trying to teach a people that when he is here, you reverence it. And 
as a people understand that, then we get into a place and we position ourselves when we follow the cloud. And so what I feel the Lord is doing, hear me, what I feel the Lord is doing is he's putting the cloud here so that we can all know the sound and the voice of the cloud. And so that when the cloud moves, we move with the cloud. So that we can recognize and be familiar with it so that when the cloud moves, we move with it. And so I need you guys to always just be engaging in worship because God is doing something supernatural there in our worship time. Part three today of Saved and Paid is going to be incredible. I'm going to get out of your hair. I promise I won't be in front of you long. But if you're going to be hashtagging your notes on Twitter, make sure you hashtag Saved and Paid, hashtag Saved and Paid. Also, you can tag me in your tweets at Antoine Jackson or the church in your tweets at Equation Church. So the last two weeks of this series has been pretty incredible in my estimation. I, I've heard nothing but good news about the series. People have been telling me, you know, they really enjoyed it. They've appreciated the balanced approach that I've been doing as it regards to tithing and giving. I, I know that it sounds crazy, but I have to say this before I move on. I appreciate you guys actually coming to church and listening. Because when it comes down to talking about money, so many times people get funny, they get fickle, they don't want to hear about it, they don't want the pastor to talk about their money, but you guys have been here every single week and I really appreciate it, so I just want you to give yourself a great big hand. People get so weird when you talk about money, and so I appreciate you guys listening and allowing me to be able to speak and be a voice of wisdom into it. But listen, I don't want to talk about tithing today. Uh, there are a lot of things that I just didn't really get around to finishing up with tithing. So what I'm going to do is this. This upcoming Tuesday, I'm going to do a telebible study from 7 to 8, from 7 to 8. Call in this Tuesday from 7 to 8, 605 562 3000. Again, 605 562 3000. The code is there on the screen. I'm going to finish up the tithing piece of it via telebible study. So I'll do that this Tuesday, and if I get through it, then we won't do another one. But if I don't, then I'll continue with the telebible study that next Tuesday so that I can tie those loose ends together as it regards to tithing. I don't want to just leave you hanging there, but I need you to make sure you tune in this Tuesday. This is for you. So Tuesday, 605-562-3000. The code is 347-229. And uh, whatever sign that is, <laughs> call that Tuesday from 7 to 8. Lord Jesus, I'm praying today that as I begin to declare that God, you be God in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture today will come from Matthew 27 and verse 57. Again, that is Matthew 27 and verse 57. The Bible reads like this. It says, now when evening had come, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. Again, the Bible says, now when the evening had come, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. Now, who in the world had said that just because you are a Christian, you had to be a broke one? I don't understand where that mentality has come from, and I've tried the last two weeks to kind of balance it out to try to teach you guys that stuff. And so if you haven't been here for the last two weeks, please don't feel like I'm about to take you on this prosperity trip because I'm not. I'm trying to give you this balanced approach as it pertains to your money. But who in the world said that just because you were a Christian that you had to be a broke one? And for some odd reason, we have bought this lie that Christianity and poverty are one and the same. That when you take on the oath of being with Christ, that all of a sudden you take this oath of poverty by which you don't have to have anything. And I'm trying to tell you that is not the truth. I'm trying to get us to a place where we understand that God doesn't care about us having things. He just don't want the things to have us. That if we can understand what to do with the things that God gives to us, God doesn't have a problem with what you want. He just wants you to use those things for kingdom purposes. Say amen. And so it's interesting to me that we must understand that prosperity is something that you must have in context, that it must be something that you must understand in its totality, because if you don't understand it in its totality, you will think that God called you to be poor, and that's not the case, because the Spirit of the Lord has anointed him so that he can preach the good news, the gospel to the poor, to tell the poor that the poor don't have to be poor no more. But then you also don't want to have over here this mentality where you think that everything you do for God results in him giving you things. Because that is not the purpose of life. I need you to understand this. So many people have got that messed up. I'll get that further in the, in the message today. But I need you to understand that God wants us to use our resources to bring people to him. That if he can trust the people to get things to and to get things through them so that people can come to him, then he can trust us with things. 
But the reason why he can't trust us with things is because they stop with us and they don't ever go forward. They never go to a place where I can use my car to get somebody to the Lord. Instead, I'll use my car to get to everywhere I want to go, but I won't pick nobody up for church. That's why God can't give you what you want because you want your own stuff. You want it for your own deal, but God is saying, use my stuff for kingdom purposes. And so we must understand that in our text this morning from Matthew 27 and 57, we see a man named Joseph here who was a wealthy man. The Bible actually called him rich. The Bible called him rich. But the Bible also says something else. He said that he was a disciple of Jesus. I want to be that person. I want to be a person that is rich, but I also want to be a disciple of Jesus. I mean, it's all right to have things, but I want to be known as a disciple. I want to be known as a learned one, a person that can submit, sit at the feet of, be taught by, a student, a somebody that can tell me how to be better than what I am right now. I, not only do I want things, but I want to be taught as well. Come on, is there anybody in here that, 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 you see the scripture says, he was a rich man, but he was also a disciple. And I believe the church has forgot the disciple part because we want the things part. But God is trying to get the church back to a place where we become students, where we learn the things of God. We learn the Bible. We're taught. We submit. We, learn, we follow. We do those things that causes us to have the character to keep the things that God wants to get to us. That's why it's important to be a disciple so that when you're a disciple, you can handle what God gives you. But if you're just rich without being a disciple, you will fall. But when you are rich and you are a disciple, you have character to keep your money together. <laughs> Preach mission, yes, because God wants us to get to a place where we are saved and paid. Well, I know how to live like God wants me to live, but I can have what God also wants me to have. That I don't have to walk around broke just because I got Jesus. But just because I got things don't mean I have to put Jesus on the back shelf. That people, you can see my stuff and see my Jesus. You can see my relationship with God and you can see what I got. It's not one or the other. I can't be saved and paid. And what is so awesome about Joseph is really I'm not going to cover the entire story with him today. But had he not had his things, he would, he was in a critical place where Jesus had to use his tomb. Because if he was not a resourceful man, if he did not have things, Jesus wouldn't have had a tomb to be laid in. And three days later, he wouldn't have got up. Because he used his stuff to bring people to him. When is the church going to use their stuff to bring people to Jesus? And better yet, can Jesus come to you and ask you, can he use your stuff? Can he use your car? Can he use your house? Can he use your money? Or do we have to go to somebody else? No, you can't use that right now. That's for me. But can Jesus come to you in this moment and say, I need your stuff because there is somebody that I'm trying to draw to me, but I need you to be a conduit so that people can come to Jesus. So yeah, I just don't want to skip past the disciple part because I believe that God is trying to return us to a place of disciplined believers. People that are disciplined, they know how to be taught. They know how to submit and be taught under people of God and grow up in the things of God. Not just know how to quote a few scriptures and know how to tie a few things together, but people that are students of Jesus Christ. People that are taught by him, they have a relationship with the Lord Jesus. So every day he teaches you. He teaches you how to be better. He teaches you how to have more patience. He teaches you how to be more forgiving. He teaches you how to get over stuff. He teaches you how to process. Because if, you don't not, if you're not a disciple of Jesus, then you will stop. And what you think God's blessing is it could be a curse to you. Oh, because I got this, now I got a car now. But you was faithful before you had one. But now that you got one, we can't get you to be faithful. Because the very thing that you got from him is what you really wanted. You didn't want him, you wanted the thing. Say a disciple of Jesus. So in our church world today, prosperity has become about being in competition with the world. However, not understanding that God has called us to do things oh, that brings people to the kingdom of God. I don't want to be the next P. Diddy, and I don't want to be the next nobody. I want to be what God has called me to be. So I'm not in competition with anybody in the world that just because the world has it don't mean that I'm supposed to have it. If I got purpose on my life and I'm supposed to have it, then I'll have it. But if it's not for my purpose and my destiny, I bet not go out here trying to start no record label because 
It ain't, it ain't indirect purpose. It ain't tied to my purpose while I'm here in the earth. So let me give you a quick motive check really quick. What would you do if your life had no bills, no debt, or no financial concerns? What would you do with your life if you didn't have any debt, if you didn't have any bills, if you didn't have any financial concerns, what would you do with your life? And like most of us, we come back with the whole, you know, the selfish mentality. It's the MTV Cribs mentality. I'm going to have a house I want. I'm going to have a car I want. I'm going to have the maid I want. I'm going to go to work when I want to go to work. I'm going to get up when I want to get up. I'm going to travel where I want to travel. But if your mindset didn't go back to, well, God, now that I have no concerns, what can I do for you? What can I use my life to do that brings you glory? What can I use as my resources to bring you glory and to bring people to you? Say, hang with it, hang with it. Yeah, so in our society today, it's very sad that we have been conditioned to view our things as the only barometer for prosperity in our lives, but we forgot the things that actually truly make us Prosperous. The Bible says in Luke 12 and 15, it says, And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. That your life should not consist in the abundance of the things that you possess. That so many people think that, it, that God's blessing on them is tied to what they have. And I'm trying to tell you that it's further from the truth. That you cannot equate God's blessings with what you have. You have to thank God for what you have. Because there are some people that are living in the world that have everything but don't have a soul. They have everything. But they have no joy. They have no peace. They ain't even, their mind ain't regulated. They can do whatever they want, whatever they want. But they live life without any purpose or without any meaning. Because you must understand that the purpose of life is more than things. My friend, don't you live, work all of your life just to get stuff. That is the most useless kind of life, just to live and exist, just to gather things. That the moth will corrupt. That all of these things will corrupt. But my treasure. Come on, say talk to me, Bishop. Yeah, I'm trying to talk to you today because I'm trying to transition you into making you a disciple. Yeah, it's cool, man, but I need you to be a disciple. I need you to be a reflection of Jesus in the earth. The Bible also tells us this, and I'm jumping ahead of myself. The Bible says, Beloved, in 3 John 1 and 2, it says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. It says again, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health even as your soul prosper. I need you to get this because sometimes we are treating the offering plate as a way to get our needs met instead of treating the offering plate as a way to get God's needs met. That we are treating the offering plate as a way to get our needs met instead of treating it as a way to get God's needs met. See, let me tell you what happens when you become a disciple. When you become a disciple, you think of yourself less. You don't think yourself is not the first thing that is on your mind. How you feel is not the first thing that is on your mind. When you become a disciple, you want to look like Jesus. You want to touch Jesus. You want to be like Jesus. When you become a disciple, you say, God, whatever it takes to be a reflection of you, that's what I will do. And so the things that I do, I do to give him glory. No longer does he have to try to make me happy. I just live to please him. And as I live to please him the very thing that I'm seeking, guess what? It chases me down. Y'all waiting for stuff to come after you and God is saying, if you would just get happy in me, the very thing you chasing will start chasing you. If you just become a disciple, I'm telling you, my friend, that the way up is down. I know you thought that the way up was up. The way up is down. When you learn the truth of humility, and when you learn the truth of discipleship, and you learn the truth of staying under, being taught, when you learn the truth of it, it actually raises you up to places where eyes have not seen nor ears heard. When you learn how to get into a place where you say, I got to be a student of the word. I got to be a student of the things of God. I have to be a disciple. Then God can trust you with things. And the reason why some of us don't have the things yet is because he don't trust us to stay with him yet. Because he, he trusts 
tried you. Let me give her the car and see how she acts. Oh, let me give her the mate and see how she acts. Oh, let me give her the job and see how she acts. He tried you, and he saw that you, oh, you fell after those things. But God is saying now that he's giving you another chance to get into a place of humility so that he can give you the stuff to do what it is he's called you to do. Amen. So what is true prosperity? True prosperity is this. When you have shalom or peace in your life, it's having nothing missing or nothing broken. It is having nothing missing or nothing broken. It is this idea of being spiritually, physically, relationally, emotionally, mentally, and financially healthy. It is nothing missing and nothing broken. It is healthy and growing in every single area and facet of your life. That it is not just about having money, but you can't keep your mind together. It's not just about having your mind together, but you can't keep your money together. It's not just about having money, but you can't keep your emotions together. It's about spiritually growing. It's about physically changing. It's about relationally getting better. It's about emotionally being stable. It's about mentally keeping yourself together. And it's about financially not blowing your money on stuff that don't mean anything. And you see how the totality of this is? This is why the prayer that he prayed for him, the greeting that he gave him was so amazing because he says, listen man, I want you to as your soul is prospering, as you're prospering in your life, I, want, I pray that you are in health just as your soul is prospering. Now I know this is a greeting, but I need you to understand the principle in this because if we can understand that if we can keep our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions together, then everything that we need from God will just naturally attract to us. I'm trying to help you. Basically, it's the back door because the world tells you it takes money to make money, which is true in a world's environment. But guess what? In the kingdom of God, it actually takes your soul being right for money to come to you. Remember, the way up is down. The world, the way up is to climb over somebody else, to give your business cards, to call all everybody else. But the way to actually get to your next level is a place of service and humility. Boy, that got good. Every time I say that, it just gets so quiet. I ask God something. Tony, we, we, let's talk, Tony. Let's talk. I asked God this. Seriously. I asked God this earlier this year. I said, well, God, I'm the pastor now. I'm the bishop now. I got a church. I help other, other churches and help oversee things. But, God, I know that there is also a next level for Antoine Jackson. So how do I get to the next level personally for my life? When the next level can't come through a promotion in a physical title, it can't come promotion in anything else, there just has to be another level for me. And God says, well, Antoine, what you have to do is you have to put yourself in purposeful places of service and humility. So that means you have to go serve other people on purpose so that I can release the next level to you. So guess what I did? I got my butt on the plane, and I went and served other people because I understand that the way to the next level is actually going under. And so when opportunities come for me to serve, I run at them because I understand that the way to my next level and my promotion for my personal life is to put myself under. And that's why the favor of God can just continues to rest on my life. The wonder why I ain't worrying about nothing. The wonder why God just continues to provide. That's why I'm able to walk around in life with peace when there's drama all around because I know that I am walking in the will of God for my life. And if there is anybody in the room, you say, I'm ready to go to the next level. Well, let me tell you something. It may coming you getting lower y'all don't hear that in church no more oh all we want to talk about is give God a hundred he give you a thousand get in this prayer line I'm a prayer blessing over you no 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 my friend if you want character in your life you need to serve you need to get in places of humility you need to submit yourself and serve somebody and ask God what can I do to help their dream come to pass and guess what God does he helps you bring your dream to pass Three hand claps, it's all good. I'm trying to get you to a place of prosperity. You say you want to be saved and paid, but you think it's just going to come through your bank account. No, you're going to have to do some spiritual stuff. You're going to have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that God can exalt you in due time. you got to come down off of your throne and let God get up on your throne and let him direct you and tell you what to do with your life. You might have to give up some stuff. Remember the story of the rich young ruler? He says, oh, you got all of this stuff, but what are you willing to give up? 
My question is to you, that if you want your prosperity, you, God is going to first challenge you to give it up. And as you give it up, the, Jesus is so awesome. He says this, if a person seeks to gain their life, the first thing they must do is lose it. The very thing you give away is the very thing that comes back to you. And then it comes back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. So the very thing you want is the very thing you need to give away. And so if God is calling you to be in ministry, you better serve somebody with one. If God is calling you to do something awesome with the business, you better find somebody, you better intern in their business. You better give yourself away. So as you give yourself away, then God can give you the ideas to bless you with your own. That's rich stuff right there. I should charge every single one of you. That's rich, that's rich. So your, your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions, true prosperity should be a result of what is happening in your spirit first. It should be a result of what is happening in your spirit first, not just a result of your natural work. That your true prosperity must be a result of what is happening in your spirit first, not what is happening in your natural work to start, you must make a decision that when you do this because motive is everything, your decision has to be God over money. God has to be greater than money. God's agenda has to be greater than wealth. God's idea must be greater than your own idea. You must make a decision of God over money because the only way you're going to get money is to make God the head of it. Oh, I just feel like I just want to just... Take it out, just pour it all in your head. But you must make a decision that God has to be Lord. Oh, he has to be more than just your Savior. He has to be your Lord. He has to be one that can lead you, direct you, give you instruction. Come on, church, y'all quiet. God has to become your Lord. He has to be more than just the one that died on the cross with you. But he has to become the one that can lead you and direct you to. Not just on Sunday. He has to become your Lord. Say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Yeah, you have to make that decision, God, over money. You have to make that decision because the Bible is very clear. The love of money is the root of all evil because if God can get your motive in check early and if he can get your motive toward him, there is nothing that he won't withhold from you. There is blessings that he wants to overtake you, my friend, but all he's doing is trying to get your motive together. That's why he put you in places of service. That's why he put you under bosses you can't stand. That's why you're married to the person you're married to because God is trying to get you together so that he can release in you what it is he wants to release in you. You thought it was a curse and it's actually a blessing because God is trying to get something to you. Proverbs 10 and 22, it says the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and it adds no sorrow with it. Some people have so many things, but they don't have peace. You can take my house and you can take my car, but don't take Jesus from me. Oh, Lord. Oh, I need Jesus more than anything. That more than my necessary food, I need Jesus. I can't just imagine my life without him. My life without Jesus would be nothing. Oh, take whatever you want to take. But don't take my Jesus from me. Because I understand that in him I live, I breathe, and I have my being. Is there anybody here that says, I need Jesus in my life? Come on, saved and paid, saved and paid. I need Jesus in my life. That I know that without a shadow of a doubt that people may walk away from me. But I know that there is one that will never leave me, nor will he forsake me. His name is Jesus. After I get everything and people live off of my prosperity, and if I lose everything, those people will walk away from me. The one person that will always be there is Jesus. Is there anybody here that will say, thank God for Jesus? Thank God for Jesus, because I understand that if I'm going to have what it is God has called me to have, then my priority has to be Jesus. Can you just shout Jesus? Yeah, I know we don't use Jesus' name in the church anymore because that's not popular anymore. But let me tell you, he is the king of this house. He is the Lord of this house. And if we're going to have what God has called for us to have, we got to be a people that know how to reverence Jesus. Yeah, I, I can just say God, but his name. A name above every name. At the name of Jesus, every name. Yeah, Jesus, say Jesus. Yeah, stand with some authority, say Jesus. Yeah, he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. Yeah, he is real. He ain't fake. He ain't no fairy tale. He ain't SpongeBob SquarePants. His name is Jesus. Because we're going to be saved. 
we're going to be paid. We got to be people that got to be people of Jesus. I ride and I die with Jesus. I'm not scared to call his name. I'm not scared to say I go to church. I'm not scared to say I'm connected with Jesus and I got a relationship with him. Yeah, because it's Jesus that gave me what I got. Oh, Lord. Have mercy. So let me get through the rest of this and I will be out of your hand. I need you to understand that nothing shall and nothing will separate you from the love of God, which is found in Christ Jesus. Nothing or nobody should take the place of Jesus in your life. And if that means that I have to break up with you, Arriva Dirty, it's been good. The relationship was great. But you're not going to take the place of Jesus in my life. If that means I can't work Sundays, holler at your boss, God will give me another one. Because nothing is going to take the place of Jesus in my life. If that means I have to catch a bus, if I have to hitchhike, whatever it takes to get to church, I'm going to just be out there with my thumbs up because nothing is going to take the place of Jesus in my life. I know that if I don't keep my soul right, ain't nothing coming to me. And that's what I'm trying to preach to you today because I'm trying to help you get your soul right. Because if I can get your soul right, then God can pour the blessing that he's waiting on you. It's like this God is sitting in heaven just saying, wait, I'm waiting on him to get it. I'm waiting on him to humble himself. I'm I'm waiting on them to pray more. I'm waiting on them to get their soul together. I'm waiting on them to get their mind together. I'm waiting on them to deal with fear. I'm waiting on them to deal with this relationship. Because if they deal with it, I can bless them. And I'm trying to tell you, God is trying to get something to you. I'm preaching better than y'all talking back to me today. But God is trying to get some blessings into your life. But God is waiting on you to get your soul together. Is there anybody here that's going to make a decision? I'm going to get my soul together. My mind, I'm feeling my mind. Oh, I'm going to get my life right. You're not going to quit playing with me. I do everything else I want to do throughout the week. So you better believe I'm going to be at church because I got to get my soul. My soul. I got to get my soul together. I got to let God get in my mind. I got to let the word get in my mind because as it transforms me, I'm able to receive. I'm able to receive what it is God has for me. So Bishop, what are you saying? How in the world can I get to a place of being saved and paid and I'm going to get out of your hair? The Bible says this in Matthew 6 and 33. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. God is trying to get us to a place where we move from seeking God's hand to actually seeking his face. Oh, see, that's why worship is important. Because worship, you ain't asking God for nothing right there. Worship is saying, God, I don't need your hand right now. I need your face. I need to be in your face. I need face time right now. So when I lift my hands, it's because I need your face. I don't need money. I need your face. Is there anybody in here that needs God's face? I'm seeking first the kingdom of God. I'm moving beyond your hand. I'm moving beyond needing a bill paid. I'm moving to a place where I need your face. Where God, I need your face. I need to know you. I need a relationship with you. I need to know you in the pardon of your sin. I need to know you in the fellowship of your suffering. I need to know you. Lift your hands. God is trying to get us to a place where we quit treating him like a prostitute and we use him for what we want and when we get it, we're done. He is looking for people that will seek his face in his hand. I'm going to just stop there. Lift your hands, would you? Come on, stand on your feet in worship. Oh, Jesus, we need your face. Make your face to shine upon us. Make your face to shine upon us. Show us your glory. 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 Show us your glory.
God, I pray over your people now that they get to a place, God, where they want your glory and they want you more than anything. That God, that we become true worshipers and we come kingdom, become kingdom ambassadors. That what breaks your heart is what breaks your, what breaks our heart. That whatever is your passion becomes our passion. That whatever is your drive becomes our drive. That every single day when we wake up, we want you to smile. We want to see your face and see your smile. In Jesus' name. Come on, give God a great big hand. Praise everybody. Come on, you know you need a relationship with the Lord Jesus. In this moment, I want you to come down. You need a relationship with the Lord Jesus. You need to recommit your life to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. You know you need him. I need you to come down this aisle now and give your life to Jesus. Come on, lift your hands, everybody. You're here. You need him. You know he's tugging at your heart. You know you need to recommit your heart to Jesus. Come give yourself to him today. Surrender and submit your life and become a disciple and come to Jesus. Come on, are you here? Are you here? Are you here? You need to become a disciple of Jesus. You need to recommit your life to Jesus. You need to give your life to Jesus. You need to be saved. You need to be delivered. You need to be set free. You need glory. Hold your life. Don't miss it today.
one great big hand raise, everybody. I have so much more to say. We can't say it all in one day. But I need you to understand that God is trying to take us somewhere. This is why it's a journey. He's trying to take us somewhere. You may be seated. He's trying to take us somewhere. And you need to get here. You need to be here. sins on the cross at Calvary. And so really, we don't owe God anything. Everything we give to God is because we love Him. So thank God for what He's done. And when I give Him my offering, it's because I honor Him. If I'm making my check, make my check available to the Ecclesia Church. If you're giving by debit or credit, please, we need your first and your last name, your address, and your telephone number so that you can get proper credit for your giving. If you are watching us via Ustream, thanks for tuning in. You would click the donate button to your right. Then you can pay your time. You can get your time and your offering there. Thanks for tuning in today. Would you take a second, please, fill out your offering down below? We'll receive it in one moment. All I need. that he 
he still chooses to love me. Come on, is there anybody in here that knows that God chooses to love us regardless of anything that we've done, all of our sins, all of our mistakes? He still loves us. You're dismissed. If you want to stay in worship, you can stay in worship. See you next week.